Now I'm going to show you how I make the more uh, the sec second generation Wiggly. Uh, it gets away from the, the problem of the screw eye and rigging it and so on. What I've done is I've uh, created a mold just for the tail, like so. And then we've got a separate mold for the body. And you'll notice this mold has got a pin running across here and also built to accommodate a loop. First thing I'm going to do is pour the tail. And uh, I'll use my little mold here and just for the heck of it I'm going to put a binder around it. Make sure it's nice and tight. And I've got another little piece that fits on top and you'll see why that is in a minute. Same plastisol. Now while this stuff is heating up, I'm going to make a different kind of a harness. One that doesn't pull out very easily at all. And what that requires is a piece of tubing that's the right diameter to accommodate a couple of, uh, a couple of eyeballs. So, tubing fits in there. And what I'm going to do, actually, I bend my brass, this is a soft brass wire, and this is a piece of tubing, and I'm making the brass wire kind of wrap around the tubing, and it will fit inside my mold so that I've, I've got a permanent deal to hold this little uh, brass thing in place. And what's cool about the brass, you can tune it. If you need to, you can move it just a little to the right, a little to the left. It's quite flexible but not so flexible that it will move when you're fishing. But it's flexible enough so you can just get those fine-tuned things. And in fact, if you're making crankbaits, use brass. It's way, way easier to work with than, uh, than stainless. Okay, first step, I'm going to cut a little piece of wire about so long. And I could use uh, a round nose pliers to form it, but it's easier to use a little wire forming tool. This little deal is called a Boggs Tackle Maker. I've had it forever. Great for bending wire. Lines up like so. We end up with that. This is my, my hook hanger block, and I have measured the distance from the nose of Wiggly uh, to where his eye sockets have to be. And so all I have to do is take this wire and just sort of bend it lightly like so. It's brass, so it bends really nicely. There we go. Pull that out, it started. <clears throat> I'm going to take a little piece of this tubing, make sure I've got it cut nice and flush. And I'll cut a piece, and I just estimate this. I usually come pretty close. A piece that's going to fit just inside here. Perfect. So I'm going to turn this screw eye 90 degrees. I'm going to slide this little piece of tubing over another piece of tubing that just happens to fit just inside this mold just right. And then I will take the little piece of brass and put it into place and make sure that it fits Good. Short, maybe. There you go. And then once you've got your positioning figured out, then it's just a matter of uh, kind of tightening the whole thing down over the over the tubing. Now we're ready to pour it. All right, uh, my tail has set up and my body plastic has melted. So here's phase two. I have this little stackers on top of here Boop. to give me a little thingamajig sticking out. And what I'm going to do is just clip this this way. Give it a little clip. A little clip. And then this fellow sits in that position. He's all lined up. We've got locator holes in our mold, and that's all covered on 
in other episodes. Now, if I wanted to, I could put tungsten in the belly of this one as well, but I'm not going to. I'll just make him a regular wiggly. This fits like so, and just, just for safety's sake, because I don't want any plastic in my shoes. Put that around that one. Put that around that one. And then just to make absolutely certain that my screw eye is in place. Make sure I put a pin. Yep, my screw eye is in place. There we go. I make sure your plastic is really hot and this is really hot and I'm just going to start pouring. When you're pouring a relatively large mold like this one, when you do your first pour, you'll see it comes up, you know, I've got it pretty well even with the top. But as I sit here and wait, as it begins to cool, it's going to drop down a little bit. So you want to be ready, uh, after maybe two or three or four minutes, as this thing drops down, to top it off a little bit. So you can see that it's reduced down a little bit in there, so I'm just going to pour a little more. Yeah, I think it's about ready. Pull the pin out. Woo! Shoot some rubber binders off of here. I want to take the tail off first because I don't want to break it. Okay, bang. Bang, look at that. I think I'll snip this rascal. No. There he is. And as with the other one, I'm going to just trim his little thing us off. Now, as you will recall, we've got a tube through here with a tube through the tube. So I'll just pull that out. Take a little bit of crazy glue. And I've got these eyes with little uh, pins on them, which I've shortened slightly. And I'm just going to put that eyeball right in that slot. Being careful not to glue myself to the lure. Mm -hmm. Shorten it just a little. Another little drop. And the whole point, of course, of this exercise. So the whole point of this exercise wasn't just to make some real pretty eyes, and these eyes are, you must admit, rather lovely. The whole point is, I've got an adjustable brass ring coming out the nose so I can tune this thing, and it's affixed with this tube, and it's never, ever going to pull out of there. Very, very slick, very, very slick way to do it. And if uh, this gets beat up, all you have to do is chop it into pieces, pull this out, and uh, you're ready to go again. All this stuff is totally recyclable. So there you have it, Mr. Wiggly. You can make a medium-sized one with eyeballs. You can make little ones. You can make big ones. You can do anything you want.